receive the grace of God in vain. Lord, to be gathered in the house of prayer that you would wake us up and just cause our heart to still be beating and our lungs to still be breathing, to still have a good mind in our head and be able to have a roof over our head and food to eat. So then you brought us here safely over these highways and these roads when others are having accidents this morning and maybe even losing their lives on the road, you brought us safely. Thank you, Jesus. We appreciate you all the day. And then to give us this great salvation, or oh, to give us a mind, Lord, and to fill us with the Holy Ghost and tell us that we have the mind of Christ. Oh, what a blessing it is. What a blessing you bestowed on us. We may not have all the monies we want, we may not have all the friends we want. We may not have the comforts of life we want. But we got Jesus and that's enough. We got a Savior. Lord, that's able to cause all grace to abound unto us. Bless your people on the day. Bless those that are sick. Lord, and can't be in the house of prayer this morning. Mom and Pop Smith, Pop Henderson, their family. Lord, bless Brother Mills' family. Lord, had that funeral on yesterday. Bless them, strengthen them in their loss. Oh, Father, how we depend on you at this hour. So much turmoil in the world and around the globe that red horse is riding and taking peace away from the earth. But you said, my peace I leave with you. Not as the world giveth. You gave us peace that passes understanding. When we don't understand, we can still have peace. Thank you, Jesus, that the Holy Ghost is righteousness, peace, and joy. We appreciate you on today. Lord, bless Mother Hickman and Mary Jones and her sister Alice and the Armsteads and all these here that have afflictions in their body. Lord, that didn't stop them from being in the house of prayer. They got troubles that didn't stop them. They got burdens that didn't stop them. They got upsetnesses that didn't stop them from being in the house of prayer. Put a blessing on these overcomers today. In Jesus' name, amen. Put your hands together. Amen. As you're seated, we thank you. 
for praying with us. Amen. Appreciate Sister Patty, the song service. Appreciate the Holy Ghost of the prayer. Amen. Oh, would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you, oh, evil of victory win? There is wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. Oh, the land. oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the land. much wider than snow. There is power in the blood, so much power in the blood. Who oh, come for a cleansing to Calvary's flow. There is wonderful power in the blood. For oh, there is power, power in the blood of the land, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the land. and pride. There is power in the blood. Oh, power in the blood. Oh, come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There is a wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power In the blood of the Lamb, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Won't you put your hands together for Jesus alone? For Jesus alone. Oh, thank you for the blood. Thank you for the sacrifice that makes us whole. Thank you for faith to believe beyond our seeing and beyond our feeling, beyond our understanding, to believe in the perfect work of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. How many believe it's a perfect work? How many believe you don't have to add nothing to it? Amen. I heard the Lord say, well, I said to him, sometimes I don't know who talked to me or here. Well, I was praying, but I tell the Lord how much help I need. And I heard the Lord say, vain is the help of man. And he said, that man includes you. That you can't help yourself. You can't save yourself. You have to depend wholly on Jesus Christ. Amen. And then while I was singing, I felt the Lord was telling me what he's doing and I'm happy about it it's, it's uh, painful but the Lord is getting flesh out of the way and it's going to be nothing but a Jesus ministry centered on Jesus Christ alone gone are the days of ministers building up big ministries for themselves to glorify their own name there's nobody going to receive glory in this hour but Jesus alone Amen. Aren't you, aren't you ready for that? Amen. So I'm having to uh, get myself out of the way. And it's a, lot of, it's a lot of me that's been in the way. But the Lord is helping me. And I know you may not understand what you're going through. I was ministering somebody yesterday. You know, just so beat up and downtrodden. I, you know, 
I don't remember exactly how I described it to him, but you know, it was on the order of what you expect crucifixion to feel like. It ain't gonna feel good. <laughs> hey man, God is getting us out of his way so that Jesus can be glorified. Aren't you ready for it? You know, a lot of uh, what's been wrong, it's not that God ain't going to move. It's certainly not that we're not praying, but God knows we're praying. But it's a lot of flesh in God's way. Amen. The Bible says they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust thereof. Amen. So it's a lot of us that has to get out of the way now. I'm thanking God. You know, that the Lord is helping me, you know, get out of his way. Amen. 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 Sanctify my tongue. Oh, so I say the pastor, yes, the pastor. I you know, and I tell you, we can, the Bible says if any offend not in word, he's a perfect man. And able to bargain the whole body. You know, praise the Lord. So the pastor was up here singing. <laughs> Hallelujah. She was leaving all her kids at the altar. She left all her grandkids at the altar. I said, Lord, she didn't mention no great grandkids. But I said, I ain't going to say that because I'm trying to sanctify my tongue. <laughs> Did I say it? Oh, hold on. Oh, she said great grandkids? Oh, I said it. Yeah, I did say it. All right, y'all pray with me. Pray for some Lord. Lay my tongue on the altar and put a nail through it. But I kind of got a chuckle over that. I said, Lord, where are great grandkids? She's going to be preaching next Sunday. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Sister Patty. Amen. I got a number of big sisters. Only one got the title, but I got a number of big sisters. And I appreciate her. And then the first uh, Sunday in March, my little sister. Praise the Lord. Amen. I got, a, I got a big old family. I'm telling somebody, you know, you can't depend on your natural family. You know, the saints of God is your family. You know, the saints of God is your family. Y'all often hear Brother Ricky get up and he talk about, well, I talk to Tracy or I talk to Cadillac. That's my brother and sister. He talk to them more than I do. You know, <laughs> I didn't know that was going on. I need to talk to Brother Ricky to find out what's going on with my brother and my sister. So, uh, you know, when you get saved, not that you cut loose your family, but a lot of times you don't have anything in common. You know, they, they gravitate around basketball and all that other stuff. And, you know, I don't gravitate around basketball. I've, I've gone to a game or two. Amen. When I see people gathered together and ain't nobody praying, that, that bothers me. <laughs> Man, don't you ever go to these events and all these people sitting around and you think, man, somebody ought to be preaching. Y'all don't think, like, I'm crazy. <laughs> I, was, I was still in high school, so right after I got saved, I got saved 14, and then uh, I graduated uh, Columbia grade school, got saved, and then I went to uh, Central High School. And when I started high school, uh, age of, uh, I guess I was 15, I don't know, back then. Uh, age 15, started high school, and uh, we had a little, you know, they have assemblies, you know, when the freshmen get together, and, you know, and I, I've been in church, you know, since, you know, saved, I've been in church two years, but I've been saved, you know, uh, June, July, August, and went back to school in September, and I've been used to going to church, you know, church, you know, you open church with prayer, you know, and so we had this first assembly, and I've never been in high school my first, and I was sitting there wondering, you know, Ain't nobody starting off with prayer. And it bothered me that, you know, you had all these, you know, two, three hundred people in this auditorium and ain't nobody praying. And I was genuinely bothered, but I learned that sinners don't pray. And I guess a lot of saved folk don't pray, but I believe in prayer. Because that's what helps me tune back into God. I need a I need a tune up every every twelve hours, every eight hours, every so often. Uh, so I, I go eight days without a tune-up, man, you, you be broke down on the side of the road somewhere. I need a, I need a tune-up. I need to get my mind back right because I go through things. Y'all go through anything? I suffer through things. The devil's attacking my mind. I got a helmet of salvation, amen, but every once in a while, I need a tune-up. Get my mind back right, amen. Y'all tell you what, 
You, you go through this life without praying and reading the Bible, you, you'll find out your brain is messed up. You ain't thinking right. That will get you thinking sideways about God, sideways about church. Amen. But I need the Lord. I don't care what's going on. I need Jesus. Amen. I ain't giving myself over to the spirit that's working in the world today. I got to have the Holy Ghost. I got to have the mind of Christ. Anybody want to have that mind? Amen. When your mind starts getting messed up, amen, you need a tune-up. You need to get some word. Pray until you touch heaven. And when you touch heaven, heaven touch you, it gets your mind right. God start talking to you from this word and get you back line upon line, precept upon precept. But all of us get off line somewhere or another. Don't delude yourself. Think you holy by yourself. No, you ain't either. You need the word of God and the spirit of God to every once in a while get you back right. You get on that highway and start driving that car and take your hand off the wheel. Amen. You do all right if you're in Oklahoma, but you drive down there where we at, you be out there in the trees somewhere. What you got to do, every once in a while, you got to correct that wheel. Don't you? You got to say, get back in the middle of this road. Amen. Unless the Lord did like he did me when I was 18, driving with your sister, Bridget. We were driving to Texas in the Randolph part of the woods. <laughs> and man, we uh, had to pick up her sister somewhere. She lived between uh, St. Louis and Texas. Stopped and picked her up about two or three in the morning. And she got in the car and I was in the car. Bro, Neil Boy had a brand new Cadillac. I was driving. He said, All right, bro, Mike, it's your turn to drive. I said, All right. I was itching to get the wheel. I was about 20 years old, I guess. I guess I was about 20. I had to be about 20. I didn't get my license until I was 19. Man, she got in that car about three to four in the morning. I what time it was. And about an hour, everybody was snowing. That's what I said, my Lord. <laughs> I was woke all by myself. And about that time, we went through Oklahoma. You, know, you can go through Arkansas and Texas County, but we went through Oklahoma. About that time, I guess we was in Oklahoma. I don't know. But uh, everybody else went to sleep. I guess I said, I'm going to sleep too. And he was back there snowing. Some boy, near boy was over here snowing. And I just driving. Thank God it was Oklahoma. And thank God I was saved and the Lord watching over me. Because when I opened my eyes, the sun was shining. The oil pumps was over here pumping. I, I opened my eyes. I woke up. I looked around and go, I'm still driving, Sister Wright. Everybody's still asleep. <laughs> I said, thank the Lord for the Holy Ghost. The angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him. Don't you know you got an angel watching out for you? Oh, hallelujah. Sister Wright's with bullets flying in the house. There's an angel that's guiding that <laughs> Amen. I thank God that there's angels. Paul called them ministering spirits. Y'all read your Bible? Sent forth to minister for them who shall be the heirs of salvation. Now what kind of nut are you worshiping angels when angels are here to serve you? Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says you're vainly puffed up by your flesh and mind. If you're worshiping angels, you're intruding into things you don't know about. You ain't supposed to worship angels. When, they, when John worshiped the angel, they said, don't do that. He said, worship God. We ain't here to worship angels. Put up statues of angels. Angels are here to minister to us. Amen. Get up pray in the morning. Wake him up. Do you sleep over there? <laughs> All this trouble I'm in. Man, I thank God for watching over me. Not just when I got saved, before I got saved. Amen. God was watching out for us. Amen. Is that right, Sister Brown? Amen. Crazy here chasing down a man that stole a, a radio from you at gunpoint. It's got to be the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because, man, people shoot you and don't think nothing about it. Why are they listening to your radio? Amen. <laughs> but God watched over. Brother Brown, that guy robbed you, didn't he? With a gun right here in this neighborhood. But God watches over his people. You got angels standing there saying, My son. The thief come to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen. But I know somebody that came that I can have life and life more abundantly. Thank you, Jesus. And then he gave his angels charge concerning you. So I said, I thought that was just Jesus. No, that's all of them. He's just the firstborn among many, brother. God got all kinds of sons and daughters that need watching over. Amen. Especially y'all still up here in St. Louis. Amen. Folks are very cute. Folks stand out in the ministry having conversations. I don't blow my horn. I just wait. Amen. They'll get finished sooner or later. I'm sitting down. They're standing. They'll leave sooner or later. Amen. Amen. You blow your horn. The last thing you think about is that bullet. Lord, help. 
Amen. Anyway, speaking of St. Louis, we're going to have a preparedness day. The uh, preparedness committee is preparing a day just for St. Louis. Amen. Ain't nobody going to say amen to that. <laughs> so, amen. So we're going to come up here at the end of March, last Sunday in March, on the 26th. Amen. We got it up there on the flyer back there. So, Brian, I'll touch your bulletin board. So we got that flyer up there. And we want to talk to you about some things. They want to talk to you. Amen. I want to talk to you about some preparedness things. You know, because God's people need to get prepared. God told, amen, Pharaoh what to do to get prepared for what was coming. Told Noah how to get through what was coming, didn't he do it? And y'all know that St. Louis has been turned into hell. Not going to be, has been. Some of you are living, amen, on the middle of, of, of Fire Brimstone Avenue. Amen. And so you need to know how, you know, when things get rough, how to be prepared for that. My people are destroyed for what? Jesus said this, the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Y'all read this in the Bible. They see people just so spiritual that they're, uh, no, you got to do something natural. You know? Amen. Go ahead and sit down. I got time. Yeah, I believe the Lord's going to give us. You know, when you're in a city, see, the Bible says, Won't be under them that join house to house, so that there be no place in the earth where a man may be placed alone. But when you get people concentrated together, then demons and spirits are concentrated together. Yeah. Amen. So, you know, you get out of the country, your neighbor may have a demon, but he's five miles away. You can't feel it. But you hear the city, <laughs> your neighbor got a demon, and y'all share a common wall, you're going to feel everything there. Just like they roaches come over your house, amen, their demons come over in your house, and you got to pray about it there. Be some Holy Ghost raid. <laughs> amen. So we want to, uh, want you to be here, and we're going to give you some good food. Amen. Maybe somebody cook some macaroni and cheese and some green beans, and we'll buy some chicken. I think black folk like fruit chicken. <laughs> well, well, there are two things. I, I thought about Brother Rice, but I said, no, that's too much on Brother Rice. Uh, two, two things, fruit barbecue and fruit fried chicken. That's just black folk time. I didn't want to burden Brother Rice with all that barbecue, so I said, well, we'll just do chicken. Maybe we, we buy some macaroni and Big Sister can find somebody to cook it up. That's the room. She ain't saying nothing. Sister Rice, all right, we got one of our here, Sister Rice. All right, now, Sister Rice is cooking one. She might be feeling junky and cook one of them cakes. Oh, woo! Woo! Good day in the morning. Very good. Well, I'm going to eat two slices and spend an extra 30 minutes on the treadmill. Bless him. <laughs> Amen. But we're going to feed you and then we're going to talk. And they're going to have dual prizes. They're going to have some nice prizes and a uh, raffle. Amen. Get you out here. We might have our new carpet by then, so we might have to put some plastic down here, brother. Brown, I don't know. I don't know if messing up my new carpet. But we met with the carpet. Now, let me say this while I'm thinking about it. Please, especially in the winter, nobody turn off the heat. You can turn it down, but don't go underneath and turn it off because if the temperature drop and the heat is off, then we got busted pipes again. We've right? had that before. So never turn the heat off from underneath. You can turn it down to maybe about 50, and that's good because temperature's dropping again right now. But we came over here last uh, Monday and met with the people and measured everything. And so uh, we're going to talk to the board because there's a lot more money. Man, everything's more expensive. Everything is more expensive. Man, the eggs so high. We, we got us some chickens. Thank God. Lord bless us with some chickens before eggs got high. Amen. Now we got more eggs than we can eat. Amen. So Brown wants some. I think Brown Archie. Brown Archie, you got a garden. You ain't got no chickens? No. They won't let you have chickens in North County? No. You don't know? I'm not worried. No. Okay. Yes, they had a lady down the street had a chicken coop. Really? 
Man, we're going to have to get some wisdom. Yeah, I had to get that. Man, you can't afford these eggs. <laughs> so, amen. You got rid of them, man. Your name right here in the city? Right on the corner, some Mexicans, they, have, yep. they got their chicken coop around right. here. You better get you some chickens. <laughs> Sister Ozzy, <Ozzie, laughs> somebody told her eggs was on sale, man. I said, this shit got some of them eggs brought in the Iron County and sold for $5 a dozen. Because the eggs are expensive. They are. Amen. Oh. But we got eggs. Thank God for that. Amen. But you got to, you gotta, even if you're in the city, and, and I'm, I'm afraid that a lot of people in the city think, well, I can't get prepared until I get to the country. But you got to be prepared for something to happen yes, up here. Because yes, troubles are happening right now all around. I'm not trying to get bogged down in this. And a lot of people think, because Brother Terrell didn't spend a lot of his last years prophesying about the end time, that the end time ain't going to happen. But every word that he spoke by the Holy Ghost is going to come on us. That word don't go nowhere. That word is forever settled in the heaven. Amen. And so we're going to see things. Amen. And people are already seeing things. Amen. So we want you to be ready and we will work with you and we'll help you even here in the city. Amen. If you're trying to get out, we're praying that the Lord help you because things are just so expensive right now. Lord, help. Everything is expensive. So we're really um, praying. But being here in the city, we want you to be prepared. Amen. So make plans, Brother Hunt, if you can encourage everybody every week to get on the bus that on the 26th of March, Amen. We're going to stay after service. We're still going to have service. Amen. 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 <laughs> we're still going to have service. But after service, we're going to um, uh, give you some good food so you're content. But not enough for you to fall asleep. And then we're going to uh, have a preparedness day. Hopefully no more than an hour and a half, maybe two, uh, to just talk about some things. Is that all right? Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord one more time. We want to go into these scriptures. Amen. We're going to go to these scriptures. Amen. The Lord's going to do a new thing, and I want to be ready for it. I told him I'm not worthy of the least of your mercies. And I thank God for the Holy Ghost, and God is gracious to us. Let's go over here to uh, John 14, and read verse 5 and 6. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we? Know the way, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Let's go all the way over to the first epistle of John, the second chapter of the first epistle of John. And just read these um, Two verses here. Well, we might as well read all three of the last verses. 27. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. And you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is true, and is no lie, even as it has taught you, you shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Let's back up again to the Gospel of St. John, this time to John 15. Chapter of John 15. And let's start reading here at verse 1. I am the true vine, and my Father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, 
so shall you be my disciples. Father, thank you for these good scriptures on the day, this good spirit that we feel in the Holy Ghost. Lord, that you're showing us, Lord, that you can move so many different ways, touch your people, meet them where they are. Lord, there's not a room, there's not a dark hole, there's not a pit, there's not an alley, there's not a valley, Lord, that we can find ourselves in where your hand can't reach us and won't reach us. If we keep faith in Jesus, you'll bring us out of every affliction and out of every trial. Oh, you're so faithful. We thank you for it. We ask you to bless this word on today. We bow our heads over it as we bow our heads over our natural food. We bow our heads over this spiritual food today. We ask your blessing on it to our soul in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, of course, I want to talk to you on abide in me. Abide in me. And I'll probably be just a little sober, a little slow. That'll be all right. Amen. Ephesians. I was listening to Brother Blue the other day. That helped me a lot. He said, if I rush through it, you won't get it. He said, but if I'm slow with it, he said, it'll sink in. So I said, Lord, I received that. I'm going to try to slow down. <laughs> I'm trying to slow down. I try my best. I say it all the time. Then I get to screaming on. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Verse 1. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you will walk worthy of the location wherewith you are called. Man, that's a whole lot right there in that verse 1. Amen. You know, Paul, I heard this this morning, uh, getting up to go into prayer, you know, that you've got to, uh, Paul said, I keep under my body, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. And I ain't trying to preach on this first one. I just want to say this. That, that, that word there is not just for the preachers in the pulpit, but anybody that's carrying the word of God to another person you got to be a partaker of that word. You got to be a doer of that word. And a lot of people are preaching a lot of grace, and preachers are preaching a lot of grace, and can't nobody condemn you and shouldn't condemn you. And that's part true. But God's people are supposed to be holy. Ye yes, that bear the vessels of the Lord have to be holy. Amen. So if you call yourself a preacher or even a witness, you got to walk worthy of whatever office that God has placed you in. Am I telling the truth about it? Amen. I know it's a lot of grace and all grace comes everything, but you can do despite the spirit of grace and try to live any old kind of way and call yourself saved and you'll find yourself cut out of this vine. Oh, well, I'm going to leave that for all. Amen. God is still a holy God. Amen. He's still a God of holiness. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Amen. All right, that's enough verse 1. With all lowliness and meekness and long-suffering for bearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit. Y'all reading this verse 4. Even as you are called in the one hope of your calling. How many laws is it? One Lord. How many faiths is it? How many baptisms is it? One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of God. Now, I want to read this Ephesians 4 to show you that this, this spirit of the kingdom of God that Paul is expressing to us, that there's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism that you can't choose how you're going to get baptized. The preacher can't choose how you're going to get baptized. Only one way to get baptized. There's one faith. You may call yourself a Methodist or a Pentecostal or a Baptist. Amen. That's just a club. The faith is what happens. Amen. When you enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. And you go from faith to faith. That's one level of faith to another level of faith. But ain't no whole different religion. There's only one faith in the kingdom of God. 
Amen. We we divide ourselves up and call ourselves something different. But there's some people in this ministry going to hell, and there's some people in the Baptist church going to heaven. Amen. Well, we don't want to hear that. Praise the so Lord. Amen. That's why the Bible says, examine yourself to see if you be in the faith. Not if you be in the church of God in Christ, or if you be in the Baptist church, or the Pentecostal church. Make sure you're in that one faith, because there's only one faith. One Lord, one baptism, one God and one Father of all. And that's that same spirit that Jesus was speaking of when he said, I am the way. Hallelujah, Jesus. They don't say, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know? You know, people today are so confused about God. Churches have confused people. We spend so much time fighting one another while the world is going to hell. We need to be lifting up Jesus. Amen. If I can agree with you anyway, let's just give people Jesus. And don't worry about if you're different than I am. I got to preach the truth to y'all, but I ain't got to go fight every other preacher out there in St. Louis. Well, hallelujah. People are confused. we got to show them. Amen. That there's, that there may be 20, 30 different denominations in St. Louis, but there's only one way to God. Jesus said, I am the way. How many truths is it? There's only one truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. Hallelujah, Jesus. Ain't about your opinion about it. Ain't about your perspective about it. Jesus is the truth. Ain't no such thing. Oprah Winfrey lied to America talking about personal truth. Ain't no personal truth. There's only Jesus' truth. Oh, hallelujah. Well, that didn't go nowhere. Huh? There's only one truth. His name is Jesus. Y'all believe this Bible? Y'all believe in John 14? He said, I am the truth. Not, not a truth. The truth. Not a way. There's only one way to get to God. Now, there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end of that way is a way of death. If it ain't Jesus, it's death. Because he said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. That means there's only one source of life in the whole universe. The Bible says all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. I mean, every tree that's alive is because of Jesus. Every frog that's croaking is because of Jesus. Every cow that's saying move right now in 2023 is because Jesus gave life. And because you woke up this morning. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we don't believe this right now, but we get ready to see how important Jesus is as the grace of God leaves the world and the world goes into chaos. We're going to realize this rock we've been standing on is the only source of solid ground. I am the life. I mean, there ain't no life in existence without me. Thank you, Jesus. The reason your heart is still beating is because of the grace of God. You may not be living like you ought to be living, but God said, I'm going to give them grace and give them time to get saved and keep them lungs filling with air and keep them heart beating. Amen. God kept you alive till you got saved. Amen, Lord. Was you a booger before you got saved? Don't ask him. You was a good girl. All right, now. Let me talk to some of these that were boogers. <laughs> Sister Rita. Sister Pat. <laughs> Jesus. Amen. But even in your sin, God kept you. Was you a booker for lunch? You were, I don't know. <laughs> you was a good booker. You was one of the ones, amen, that looked nice on the outside. And then got, oh, that's the worst kind. You was, you was a stinky one. <laughs> a stinky booker. Amen. But while you were in your sin, amen, while we were yet sinners, amen, Christ died for the ungodly. He gave his life so that you can have life, not just when you get saved, but before you got saved, he was keeping you and watching over you while people were dying all around you. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ still kept you alive. Why? He is the life. Ain't nothing alive on this planet without Jesus saying, you can live today. Amen. He is the Lord. 
of the body, but he is also the life of your inner man. Of your spirit, is that right? So let's go back over here to John 15. So I'm going to tell you, you can, you can be dead and don't know you're dead. Churches are dying. Don't know they're dying. Got to put in a whole lot of filler stuff. You know, you can be in a hospital and that, that little machine's still going beep, 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 but you're dead. Because if it wasn't for that machine, breathing a lot of your oxygen, huh? Causing that heart to keep beating. Y'all seen people, I've seen people. Amen. If it wasn't for that machine, we'd be having a funeral. Huh? Well, if it wasn't for a lot of churches, if it wasn't for music and barbecue dinners, they'd be shutting their doors. Huh? If it wasn't for entertainment and praise dancing, and women up here in bikinis, amen, praising the Lord with a bikini on and dancing, kicking up their legs, they'd be having a funeral. If it wasn't for bachelor night and singles night and homosexual night and women's night and deacons day, they'd be having a funeral. Amen. They're on life support because they're dead and they don't know they're dead because the life only comes if you plug in to Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Huh? I, I, I ain't deluding myself. Amen. I know we got a little life support going on around here, but we still got a heartbeat. The Lord told me in Revelation, he said, you have a little strength. He said, strengthen those things that remain when are about to die. Amen. So I'm here alone this morning to strengthen what we got left that's about to go on life support. And the devil tell you to build in all kind of garbage, amen, to make yourself think you're spiritual. But when you're really alive in Jesus, I'm going to show you what it means. You got to abide in that vine. Separate yourself from that vine and see how long you last. Cut a flower off that rose bush, but if you don't dip it in some kind of lacquer or something, in a few days you'll find out it's been cut off. Huh? I said, Pastor, how do I know if I'm alive? How do I know if I'm abiding in the vine? Here it is. Abide in me, verse 4. And I am you. Notice what he said. The branch cannot bear fruit of itself. No more can you. When on tells in verse 5, without me, how much can you get done? Huh? He said, every branch in me that bears fruit. Now I thank God that Jesus is my mediator and my intercessor. Times God came by. The times God came by and looked at you and said, Why is this tree cumbering the ground? Cut it down. And somebody said, Amen. Don't go about it one more year. Have mercy. I mean, I can't tell you how many times. I said, you preaching in the pulpit. I ain't ashamed about it because all of us on that same road, all of us been up and down. I can't tell you how many times God has come by and didn't see the fruit on my tree. He showed us what he was looking for. Amen. With that fig tree when he cursed it. So I said, well, the time of fear, when you come, God ain't accepted no excuses. No, he's not. He said, every branch in me that don't buy no fruit. He said, I'm going to cut it out. Oh, how, but here's a good point. He said, every branch. I don't care if all the other branches on the tree got 50 cherries on it. If he come to my branch and ain't number one cherry, he ain't going to cut me off. He said, I'll purge you so that you can bring forth more than one fruit. Hallelujah. All you got to have is just a little bit of fruit to show you there's some life in there. And he said, I'll come by and I'll start cutting off. Huh? Those things that's keeping you from bearing fruit. Those things that's drawing life, amen, out of the vine, but they ain't producing nothing. What do they call them, brother? Aren't you on the tomato plant when you, when you cut them off? I ain't going to say it. You say it. What do they call them? Call them. <laughs> you got to go back and pinch them off, don't you? 
You know why? Because they don't burn nothing. All they're going to do is suck life from the real tomato. See, the Bible says when the unrighteous is cut off, he said, then shall the righteous shine in the kingdom of their father. Y'all read this in the Bible. So the Lord said, every branch that's still abiding in me, but is bringing forth fruit, he said, I'll purge it. He said, but if it ain't bringing forth no fruit, he said, I'll cut it out. And see, look, the fruit of the Spirit is found in Galatians 5 over here. It ain't going out and getting a 60 by 80 tent and putting it up and having five people on it. That ain't the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit, well, let me go ahead. The fruit of the Spirit ain't me standing up here in this pulpit because a preacher can stand in the pulpit and live a whole different life when he's out of the pulpit. The fruit of the Spirit, ain't you coming in this house of God and being what everybody expects you to be? The fruit of the Spirit is what the Holy Ghost, amen, brings out of you when you draw life out of that vine. The Holy Ghost must be producing something that comes out of you and ministers to somebody else. Galatians 5. Just too much for a single moment. You got to bring forth something. I don't care if it's one chair. Have something on your vine. Have something on your branch. For the Lord to look at it and say, hey, I can work with this. Amen. You ain't got, you ain't got to have a boat load, but you got to have some of this fruit. We thought the fruit of the Spirit was whole different. Ba 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 and praise God when they say your child has died, when your heart is broken in tears, running down your eyes, some spring up on the inside of you when they fire you from your job. That's when you find out if there's any fruit, if there's any life in that vine. You may get down for a little while, but that well going to spring up. Thank you, Lord. Thank that well going to spring up. Ain't it? Because there's life in it. We've all been down. Oh, we've all lost jobs and, and had people betray us and, and, and life stab us in the heart. But you can't separate yourself from the vine. I'm going to get to that in a minute. But we go through something. In this world, you shall have tribulation. In this world, you're going to go through stuff that you don't understand. In this world, the devil going to tell you, God done forsaken you. In this world, the devil going to tell you, why is God allowing you to go through what he's allowing you to go through? I'll tell you why. He's purging you that you may bring forth more fruit and it don't feel good when God put them scissors on you and say, I'm cutting off some stuff right now. Don't feel good. Huh? Don't feel good when people break your heart. Don't feel good when you go somewhere for stuff. You got, and it ain't fair sometimes. Let me put that in here. People think if you say it, life don't always be fun. Uh-uh. Sometimes stuff's going to happen to you that ain't fair to you. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. He didn't say life would always be fair. He said, I'll take the fair and the unfair and work it out for your people. Here's fruit. Here's what comes out of us. Huh? This is what God is looking for. When we walk by that tree, say, I need a snack right now. What is Miles bringing for? What is Kim bringing for? What is, what, what, what is Patricia bringing for? Amen. What is Jeff bringing for? What, what, what's on this tree? Let me go by and look and see if I can find something. Amen. Bring it forth. You know that the will of God is how we find in Revelation. The tree of fruit brought, the tree of life brought forth fruit in every season. These natural trees don't bring forth fruit in every season. It's down season right now. I said, well, Pastor, I just went and I bought a mango at the supermarket. That came from Peru. That didn't come from Missouri. It's summer down there. They shipped that on a boat, a plane, a train, or something. But they didn't grow here. Amen. Because here it's a dormant season. But if that tree is still alive in a few weeks, it's going to come back. You're going to see a few birds on it. 
Oh, hallelujah. Don't rejoice over me, devil. Amen. God's going to bring something else out. Amen. Amen. He's been purging me. He's been pruning you. Amen. The devil tell you you're cut off. You ain't cut off yet. I'm going to show you right here. You got some kind of fruit. Something's been coming out of your heart. Something's been coming out of your mind. Amen. Don't let the devil tell you. Amen. See, see I'm going to read to you in Jude. Jude said, these be they that separate themselves. We'll get to that later. Don't cast away your confidence. God is still with you. Huh? Shakespeare said, now is the winner of our discontent. Winter time, everything looks like it's dead. Don't let it look like it's gone. But a tree that looked like it's dead, even, even Solomon said, if a tree dies, shall it live again? He said, but through the civil rain, say it'll prosper, it'll burn out again. Amen. Just because you may be in the winter time, in the coldness, and the darkness, don't none of us like it. Amen. But somewhere spring is coming. He said, I'll pour out the Holy Ghost in the first month. Y'all don't know what the first month is. In the Bible, the first month was April. Springtime. Everything's coming alive around here. Jesus got up, and we're going to get up to you. You praying for something. Verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is what the Lord is looking for. Number one on the list. Oh, God, help us, help us, help us, help us, Lord. Number one on the list. Y'all tell me, I, 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 I don't want to read it. What, what does it say? Number one thing the Holy Ghost brings out of you is love. Love ain't, I invite you over my house and you invite me over yours. Love is that thing in you that overcomes a multitude of faults. Love is that thing that when people do you wrong, you still treat them the same. Oh, yeah, hallelujah. Yeah. Love is that thing when the devil say hate them and cut them off. That thing in your heart say, I, I know that they was wrong, but I love them anyhow. Amen. See, you love your babies, but you got to love your enemies. Amen. Your kids have cursed you out. You still love them? Mm -mm. So I say, not me. So I say, How you know your kids? Anyway, some of y'all know y'all kids ain't cursed you out because they still here. <laughs> if my daughter ever cursed my wife out, Lord help us all. She might still be here, but she's gonna be living. She's <laughs> so great and strong as she used to be, but she can pick up a bat. Kids steal from you, you still love them. Overlook it, don't you? Well, what about when other people treat you wrong? Uh, we're gonna find out if we still in the vine. The first thing the Holy Ghost is going to bring forth. See, Paul told us in Romans 5, he said, the love of God is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost, which is given to you. And when God put his spirit in there, one well, of the first things you're going to experience is the love of God. You're going to experience righteousness, but you're going to feel that love of God. You're going to feel joy, but that love of God is going to come to the forefront. First thing on the list, love, joy. Can you rejoice when you're going through Oh, hallelujah. We fall down or I fall down. They put up both hands. Man, I fell in it. I've murmured. I've complained. Uh, I'm supposed to have a bushel full on my breast, but I only had one little piece of joy. <laughs> it was just enough to give me enough strength to put on my shoes and thank God I remember my pants and made it to the house of God because I just barely got here. I ain't mad at y'all sometimes when you can't get it. But sometimes, there's been times I've gone through, I barely made it, but I knew where my health was. Huh? The devil start talking to me about my wife dying and God this and God that and thoughts of blasphemy. Y'all ain't been there. Blasphemy going through my mind about my God. See, that's what the devil wants. He wants you like Job to curse God and die when you get to going through. But Job had enough integrity to say, when I came here, I was naked. When I leave, I'm going to be naked. The Lord gave and the Lord take away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He had enough joy to praise God. Lord, help me. I need some pruning. Anybody else need some pruning? Yeah, yeah. Brings from joy. Brings from peace. Yeah. The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that do what to peace. When there ain't no peace to be found, you're a peaceman. Some of y'all that got a lot of money, amen, when there ain't no ice, you walk up to that refrigerator. Oh, right now, you like somebody got an ice maker on the refrigerator. You ain't? Okay. So don't watch you. Uh, I know it. <laughs> you walk up to the refrigerator and put the, and it makes ice when it wasn't no ice. 
The Lord said, what's a peacemaker? A peacemaker is somebody where there ain't no peace to be had, they know how to make peace. Blessed are the peace, not the peace enjoyers. <laughs> we, we enjoy peace, but sometimes we need to be making peace. Oh, hallelujah. I better leave that alone. I'm losing them. What time is it? The Holy Ghost brings peace out of you. Some people love controversy. When we was in grade school, man, that's all I had to do with old school. A fight break out. They yell, a fight, a fight, a blood, blood break. And everybody come running. Yes, Lord. My Lord. Everybody got to see it. And then nobody want to break it up because they want to see them fight. Yes, yes. Especially if it was two girls. <laughs> that's how girls used to fight in the 70s. They put their head down and start swinging their arms like windmills. <laughs> that, was, that was entertainment. God's people don't like confusion. Not you, Sister Rice. You fall like this, don't you? <laughs> hey, hey, I don't mess with Sister Rice. <laughs> I'm just meddling. See, I told y'all about my tongue. Somebody needs to be praying for me. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Kirkwood. Peace. What the Holy Ghost bring out? Long suffering. You suffer, but you only suffer for a while. Now, I'm put up this for two months. I ain't put up this no more. That's it. I'm done. Anybody ever say I'm done? Oh, hallelujah. That's the fruit. This is what the Lord is looking for when he comes to your branch. Long suffering. You put up with people. Because the Lord put up with you. I took all I'm going to take, and I ain't taking no more. She's not going to do me like that and get away with it. Mm -mm -mm. What else is on this tree? Gentleness. A soft answer does what? But grievous words do what? Oh, Lord, help me. Goodness. Faith. Meekness. Let me stop here. Meekness is different from humility. Humility means I acknowledge. I am less than God. You humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Meekness is when you say, these other people are better than I am. Oh, hallelujah. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Meekness is when you esteem other people above yourself. Humility is when you know that God is above you. I recognize who he is, but I'm going to esteem my brother and sister above myself. That's meekness. Doesn't mean you don't operate in your office. Moses was the meekest man there was. And he know how to say God will open up this earth and swallow up cold redone from the fire. He knew how to say that. That was his ministry. But his thought toward himself, huh, is manifest in Jesus Christ. What did Jesus say? He said, if you say something wrong about the Holy Ghost, you God ain't going to forgive you. He said, but you can say what you want about the Son of Man. Is that what he said? Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Is that what he said? You think you're the biggest, baddest dog on the block, you need some fruit. Temperance, self-control. Oh, Lord, somebody better pray for me extra on that one. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ, have done something to the flesh. Oh, hallelujah. We wait on the Lord to, 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 you got to crucify, you got to give yourself over to a cross. Amen. You got to give yourself over to it. It takes the Holy Ghost. Let's go over to 2 Corinthians. You can't bring forth fruit unless you're abiding in the vine. Let me go over to Jude. Let me leave that. I know you're going through some stuff. But the Lord's going to bring us out of it. Y'all believe this. Jude, verse 19. Let me read verse 18. How that they tell you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who do what? Separate themselves. God didn't even cut them off, they cut themselves off. Huh? 
separate themselves sensual, having not the spirit. You get to going through and you'll pull out of the spirit and get back in the flesh. All of us have done it at one time or another, but God had mercy on us and got us back plugged in. I'm going to read to you a few scriptures if I have time. Amen. But you got to realize you ain't got no life outside Jesus Christ. Huh? You can't make it without the house of God. You need to be in church. David said, my steps had almost slipped. Y'all read Psalm 73? He said, when I saw the ungodly prosper like they was prospering, he said, oh, I almost backslid myself. He said, but then I remembered the house of God, and when I got to church, God got my mind right. <laughs> Anybody else to have to come to church and get a tune up to get your mind right? Anybody ever been in a valley so dark you couldn't pray by yourself? You had to come around somebody else that was praying just to get your mind back right. Oh, <laughs> See, we need one another. You ain't gonna make it by yourself. I want y'all to get in that lady too. I gotta get the moving. Let's go over to Romans 8. There's a lot of separators out here. A lot of things that want to disconnect you. You got to make sure you're abiding in that vine. That's your job. Huh? The, the vine will hold you as long as you want to be held. But the Lord ain't going to make you. You got to. So Paul asked a question. Let me say this here. Amen. If you read 1 Corinthians 12 and you read some of these other chapters in Corinthians, Paul suffered more than any other apostle. Stone. Thrice he was beaten with rods. The night and the day he was in the deep. He got always from the first time he got saved, the Lord showed him how much he's going to suffer for Jesus Christ. But he said, God did it, lest I be exalted through the abundance of the revelation. He said, God gave me a thorn in the foot. He said, I went to God three times and said, God take it away. But the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you for my strength. Oh, y'all ain't listening to this word. You need something greater than your own strength. He said, my strength is made perfect. You know why you faint? Because you're dependent on your own strength when you need his strength. Ephesians said, be strong in the Lord. In the power of his mind. You can't do this on your own. You need some help. You need to draw your life from another source. And your intellect won't do it. You need to be in that mind. Because there's some stuff out here that's trying to separate you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And God is allowing the devil to come against yes, you. I told somebody the other day, I have said to God, I don't know how y'all talk to God, but man, sometimes I get down with the nitty and the gritty. God, you ain't treat me right. I found out I was wrong. He's right. You're going to find that out and keep talking to him. Said, God, God, you ain't treating me right. Why are you letting this happen to me? Why are you letting people do me like y'all ain't said nothing to God like that? Oh, why, why, why are you letting me go through this? Amen. But many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. I've been young and I've been old, but I'm not seeing the righteous forsaken. No, he said, God is still with you. He's just allowing the devil to come with them. Man, he got Edward Scissor hands at you. <laughs> <laughs> Man, cut you on every side. That word is quick and powerful and sharp. And God gonna cut you so if you belong over here and you got one little cherry on your tree, He is pruning you. Oh, so that you can bring forth more fruit. But the devil wants to separate you, so he sends separators. Here they are in Romans eight. Paul said, "Look here, I've been going through a lot." But ain't nobody gonna separate me. I don't know God loves me. Devil try to tell you God don't love you. Anybody heard that lying voice? Mm -hmm. Let's read this here. Let's start at verse 30. Three. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? What did the Lord call him in Romans in Revelation 12? He is the accuser of the brother. But John saw him cast down. Huh? It was God that justified. Who is he that condemns you? Why are you walking around with your head down? So what you made a mistake. Get on this altar and repent. Amen. And hold your head back up. Lay there till you touch God and then come back in this house of God and say, I've been washed in the blood. Hallelujah. 
Who is he? They will try to put condemnation on you. Say, God don't love you no more. God ain't going to use you. God don't cut you off. But why are you talking, devil? If your work here is done, why are you here talking? Amen. Why Why are the thief breaking in your house if there ain't nothing in there worth stealing? Why the thief come to steal, kill, and destroy? If there ain't nothing here to steal, ain't nothing here to kill, ain't nothing here to destroy, why are you here? And if he's there, then Jesus is there so that you can have life more abundantly. So separate us out here. It is Christ that died, yea, rather than his risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also is doing something for us right now, right here, making intercession for us. Who shall separate us? So separate us out here. You better believe it. That's all the devil want to do. He don't like. This, 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 this has been the biggest soap opera going. I mean, before days of our lives, before as the world turned, before all my children, the devil looked in on this relationship and he got jealous. Huh? Even the other angels said, what is man that you're mindful of him? Why do you love him more than you love us? Amen. There was a big old angel up there full of beauty, full of life. And God said, go down there and serve Sharon. Serve what? This little pimp squeak of a Christian that just got off the of drugs. I'm going to serve her and watch over her. And he said, I ain't going down there. Hey, I ain't going down like that. I'm going to be like God. Amen. So a third of the angels rebelled against God and got cast down to earth. But all the angels desired to look into this Holy Ghost we got. I got any Bible readers in here. Every single angel is wondering why God would take his life and his spirit and put it into some kind of vessel that he had to wash up, that he had to repair, that he had to clean up, that still keep getting messed up while he's doing it and still fix it every time and put his spirit and his life back in it. What is man that you're so mindful? <laughs> The Bible says the angels desire to look into this Holy Ghost experience we got with God and you trying to throw it away. Oh, I got a treasure right here. I mean, I always feel like it, but I'm living by faith. Oh, yes. Yes, <laughs> Some separators out here. I'm yeah. huh, trying to bust up that relationship. Yeah. You know how they do on the soap opera? Bust you up, tell you that man ain't no good. And as soon as you kick him out, she out there picking up his luggage. I'll take you in, baby. Yeah. Huh? I don't watch it, but I guess that's what happened. You know, now they got these housewife garbage. You know, all that. Jersey Shore. Is that still on? I don't know. Bunch of garbage, you can ask me. All these folks trying to sleep with other folks, trying to separate all this other stuff. I ain't got time for that. But they were trying to bust up me and Jesus, and I ain't letting it happen. I love him even when I don't understand him. Though God slay me, yet I'm gonna trust him. Hey, amen. I'm gonna tell you something about Sister Graham. Hey, amen. She, she, she may not have the best looking man, but she trusts me. You can tell her something about me. Hey, amen. She said, yeah, I, hey, amen. I got the best looking wife, but I trust her. They don't say somebody else gonna walk off with her. Amen. But I know who my wife is. You can't tell me nothing about my wife. You can't put nothing in my ear about my wife. Amen. Because I know who I love. Amen. You can't put nothing in my ear about my Jesus. Because I know he loves me. Amen. Maybe I mess up. Maybe I ain't the best. But he loves me anyway. Because he loved me when I was still out there in my sin. So why would he cast me away now? Then you trying to come in between something right here. You trying to separate me from the love of Christ. First thing on the list is love. Who shall separate us? I'm going to have to let y'all go. There's some separators here. Tribulation. Y'all have some of that. Huh? Still do. Distress. You ever been in distress? Oh, God, have no me. Persecution. In the world and in the church. Can I get an amen? amen. Freedom. Nakedness. Pearl or sword. As it is written. For thy sake. What does it mean? For the sake of being in love with you. I wouldn't suffer so much if I didn't love you. 
Amen. I wouldn't be going through. Amen. If the devil wasn't mad at our relationship, but the devil don't like it. So it is for your sake that we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. What is he saying? If Jesus died for me, let me die for Jesus. If he was crucified for me, let me be crucified with him. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth. And just in case I didn't name something, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Which is in Christ Jesus. I'm going to close in there. I'm going to leave some of this stuff. But I'm going to tell you something. The devil ain't got nothing against you. When you abide in that vine. Amen. And here's the thing about God. Even if you have been separated. Like the devil is telling you. There's still hope. Oh how. Can I read y'all a scripture over in Galatians 5. Galatians 5. The devil tell you. God don't love you no more. Oh yeah. God and cut you out of the vine. Oh, yeah. You shriveling up and dying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know some of y'all feel like you're shriveling up and dying. I say, how you know? Because I feel that way sometimes. I say, what do you do? I keep on praying. And every once in a while, a little bird come on that tree. Hallelujah. I don't care how dead you are. Amen. See, here's the thing about Jesus. Hey, here's the thing about Jesus. He ain't just the life. He told him, Martha over there in John 11, baby, I ain't just the life. I'm the resurrection and the life. See, you can take a bread, piece of bread over to Africa and find a man that's starving, amen, to death, and you can put that bread in his mouth, and that man will start living again. You can find somebody laying to him that died next to him that died an hour ago and put that same piece of bread in his mouth, and it won't do nothing for him. But if that bread is the bread of life, amen, it'll keep this man alive and it'll resurrect this man that's been laying there dead. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all know how powerful the Spirit of God is? Y'all know how old uh, Moses was? Moses was 80 when he started his ministry. I'm close. He was 80 when he started his ministry. He was the youngest. That means Miriam and Aaron was older than he was. That means Aaron was a good 83, 84, 85 years old. If he was 83, 84, 85 years old, that means that he needed a rod for quite a while now. Sometimes I need a rod. Y'all excuse me. I'm only 55. I need a rod. Amen. So that rod that Aaron had had been dead for probably 20, 30, or maybe even 40 years walking around with a dead stick. And the Lord said, call all the elders of Israel and let every man lay up his rod in the presence of the Holy Ghost. In the presence of the Ark of the Covenant. In the presence of the Tree of Life. That Ark represented the life of God. It represented the Holy Ghost. Amen. And everybody's rod laid up there overnight. And when they got back there in the morning, Aaron's rod had come back to life. It brought forth birds, it brought forth armor, and the Lord said, put it in that Ark of the Covenant. I'm going to show you that no matter how long you've been dead, I can bring you back alive again because I am the resurrection and the life. I'm not just life to those that are still alive. I'm life to those that's already dead. I'm life to those that have been called. I can bring you back alive again. Oh, I need some resurrection. Oh, I don't know about y'all. I need to come back alive again in the Holy Ghost and start bringing forth this fruit. Galatians. What do I say I'm going to read? No, I ain't. I read that already. Romans 11. Why y'all listening to me? Romans 11. Amen. Y'all doing all right. Let me let you go here in a minute. Romans 11, verse 22. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God. To them which fail severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou shalt be cut off. And they also, talking about natural Israel, notice this, if they abide not still in unbelief, all to take is some faith in God, shall be, what did he say? Graft in. Oh, y'all reading this? 
For God is able to graft them in again. I'm not going to read all this chapter, but go back and read. What he's saying is God cut off natural Israel out of the tree because of unbelief. But then he tells us if they abide not still in unbelief, he said God will graft them back in again. You take an old stick that's fell off a tree and cut it and graft it back in that tree that's been sitting on the ground for three years dead and put it back in that tree, it'll never come alive again. But put it in the tree of life and it'll come back alive. How do you abide in him? Jesus said in John 15, abide in me and let my words abide in you. Is that what he said? Huh? It's the word. See, there were two trees. I'm trying to shut up. There were two trees in the Garden of Eden that were of note. There were all kinds of trees to eat. But there was also the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But there was the tree of life. And after Adam fell, he got cut off. Is that right? And after God cut him and Eve off from the access to that tree of life, the Bible says he cast them out of the Garden of Eden and he put two angels there to enter. But he also put a flaming sword that turned every way. Lest man continue to eat of that tree of life. That sword is the word of God. It cuts you. It purges you. It prunes you. And if you're going to get to the tree of life, you got to go through that sword. Amen. And that's what God put at the entrance of that tree of life. Right now, God has made his word available to you. Told them in John 6. Oh, I'm trying to shut up. He said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. They may not always be exciting. You may not stream from the ceiling fan. But if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you'll have my life in you. It'll flow out of the vine into the branch. And the same life that's in me, it'll be in you. You know what they said? They said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear? Who can hear such nonsense as this? And the Bible says many of them turn and walk no more with them. What in the world is he talking about? Huh? What in the world is he talking about? So the Bible says he turned to the twelve. Oh, hallelujah. You know what they say? It says, Kirk, they say, we're going to abide in the Bible. Not only did the multitude not understand them, but a lot of times, and this time I'm persuaded too, the twelve didn't understand what he was saying either. Man, he's talking some stuff. You and I barely understand. There's people right now, amen, think that when you take communion, it's actual flesh and actual blood. No, it's a sacrament. Yes, you got the reverence in life, but it doesn't actually turn into the flesh of Jesus. People still don't understand. <laughs> oh, my God. I spilled it. Oh, God, I'm going to hell. No, you're not either. <laughs> amen. So he turned to the 12 and said, will you go away also? Notice what Peter said. He said, where can we go? Where can we go? And we can't separate ourselves. He said, you have the word of everlasting life. How can I cut myself off from the source of life? Even though I don't understand what's going on, I can't leave this life. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. I've been through stuff in church too. I've been misunderstood. I've been told things wrong and done wrong, even by Brother Wynn. I'm going to get stoned in here right now. Oh, you say nothing about Brother Will. And, uh, but Brother Will was wrong sometimes. He was a man. I'm wrong sometimes. Huh? Am I right about it? This is right. You know, Brother Will, what you do, Pastor, when Brother Will was wrong? I went home, cried, prayed, and came right back. But I said, you ever get mad at your pastor? Yes, I got mad at my pastor. Just like y'all get mad at me. What you do when you got mad at your pastor? Amen. I knew he had the words of everlasting life. I would go home. I would pout. I would stick my lip out. But I would come right back. And I'd come to church mad with my lips stuck out. And he just ignored me until I was praying one day. And the Lord said, your spirit ain't right towards your pastor. Go and repent. I'm thinking he's the one wrong. <laughs> well, I said, go and repent. And I went and repent. I thought he was going to hug me and start crying. He said, all right, nobody. That's why I went on the back. <laughs> oh, Lord, where's the hallmark moment? Where's the violin? <laughs> but I couldn't go nowhere. No. Big sister, you ever been chewed out? Huh? And the pastor was, <laughs> well, y'all yeah, ain't going to say nothing. I know we still got some Williamites around here. But, bro, it wasn't a God. He was a man. You know, and, and you know, sometimes the people that was close in the circle got bit sometimes. Well, <laughs> so the you ever got chewed out? Mm, I'm telling you about it. Amen. But you didn't leave. You came right back. That's how I realized this where the life at. Amen. This where the vine is. I cannot separate myself from the vine and still live. Oh, give a little hand clap for the word. I'm 
I'm going to let y'all go by. God! Oh, Father, be. Lord, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for this word, the words of life. When we open this Bible, Lord, we can partake of your flesh and drink your blood. You said the life of the body is in the blood. Not just a bent letter, but life coming through these pages. Life coming over the pulpit. Life coming when you talk to us as individuals. Lord, we know this word is the source of life. Help your people in this hour. Some are going through great trials and great tests and great afflictions. Don't let these separators separate us from the love of God. Don't let us be separated from this vine. Lord, the devil wants us to shrivel up and die. But I'm persuaded, Lord, that you want life. You want us to have life more abundantly. Lord, we pray for all your people home today. Lord, that not a single one be lost. Lord, you prayed at the end and said, All the sheep, Father, that you've given me, I've kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition. Lord, you were glad that you held on to every sheep that the Father gave you. And we're praying, Lord, for all your people. Lord, that every one of us make it through these hard trials and these tests and all these things that's meant to separate us. Help us to abide in the vine. By abiding in your word and letting your word abide in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord one more time.